Okay, so we're back. I'm gonna be making this run method. Now, let's see. Well, what's it gonna do? It's going to keep updating this J applet. So what I can do is while true, it's an infinite loop, and we'll just keep going through this code. While true, um, try red dot sleep 50 milliseconds and catch and catch throwable t <laughs> and that's sort of like a catch all no pun intended um <laughs> okay So what this code does, if you haven't seen a try-catch statement, just don't worry about it. What this code does is it waits for 50 milliseconds. And now after about 50 milliseconds, we want to update all the stuff in the game. So let's make a method called public void update. And actually let's keep that let's keep track of the amount of time that's passed. We'll do double dt. And so dt is just going to stand for the number of seconds since the last update. And uh, dt is going to be in seconds. Let's write ourselves a little note there. And so before we can update, we got to start keeping track of the time. We'll have a long and time it'll be system.nanotime and this is just a long that represents the number of nanoseconds that have passed since a certain date back in time, I don't remember exactly when but you can use it to keep track of time um, and we'll do double dt delta time equals that's system dot nano time minus time which is the number of nanoseconds since this and to convert from uh, seconds to nan well from nanoseconds to seconds you just multiply times one e to the minus nine and if you don't know that's one e stands for times ten to the negative nine and now let's just reset time. Let's say time equals system dot nano time. And hmm. oh, now we update dt. Okay, so this is going to call this method. Goes up here. Does this code, and it'll do it with dt. Oh, there's one more thing we need to do. We need to just repaint all of the stuff in the in the graphics. So we just do repaint. That's a built-in method that's in J Applet. And it just recalls this method. Alright. We'll save and compile. Everything looks like it compiles. Alright, so we don't have any bugs. Now, let's set up our background. I like to make my background a buffered image. Um, hmm. Buffered image. I'll just call it image. Because it doesn't really need a name. Not an important name. Uh, equals new buffer image. And I always forget how to make the constructor for buffered image. So I go to the Java API. I'll put a link in the description of the video. And you can just look up any class you want in the Java API. And it'll give you all this information about it. Now here's how to do the constructors for buffered image. 
Um, I like this one because it's the simplest. Uh, width, height, and an image type. And image type is one of these variables up here. See, static int. Um, this is the one I want. It just says that every pixel is going to be, hmm, it's going to have four bytes that represent alpha, B, G, and R. Uh, blue, green, and red. And alpha is the, uh, the number that represents how transparent it is. So, it was width, so get width, that's just the screen width get height, screen height, and that constant. Dot. There we go. Now we've got to get the graphics of that image. And we'll store it to a variable. Because that makes things easier. Uh, I'm going to rename some variables here. Instead of G, this is going to be graphics. And this is going to be little g. Because I always like the right to little g because it's easier. Um, little g dot set color. Now this is where you would be setting whatever color you want. New color. Uh, and you put in three numbers that represent red. Uh, blue. No. Red, green, and blue. And in any case, it doesn't really matter for this, because this is just black. Now, black is a built-in color. So I can just do color dot black. And that's black. And you can make this any color you want. And what we do is we draw g dot fill rect fills in a rectangle, a black rectangle, at pixel, pixel location 0, 0, with a width of get width, the entire screen, and a height of get height, the entire screen. And now we do, hmm, g dot, oh, that's all we have to do, and that draws the background. Last thing we got to do is say graphics dot draw image. That refers to the big graphics up here. Draw image image at zero zero with a null image observer. So no image observer. All right, and it compiles successfully. And we'll run it. And see, now rather than being white, we have a black screen to draw on. Uh, okay, we're going to close that. And the reason I draw to a buffered image rather than drawing directly to the graphics is just so that you don't get any flickering. Because if you draw just to the graphics, you get this flickering where it looks like an old TV set flickering through an image. And that's that's really annoying. Um, all right, we compile. I just compile all the time, and I don't even don't even notice when I'm doing it. Um, yeah, let's write. I think that's all for now. In the next video. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be creating the player, the little green thing that moves around along the bottom. So we're going to file, and oh, I'll save. It's already saved.